the thought I was having about theology and how we as humans try to figure God out and we'll study the scriptures and look at all these facets and characteristics of God according to things written in the Bible and we'll look at all these things and put it all together as a picture of who God is and I was just wondering when we do that we put all these things together and there it is there's our concept our understanding our description our doctrine of God however you want to put that does that mean then that you could then take all of that all of those ideas and concepts and scriptures and verses and pull them all apart one by one and then as you take it all apart eventually you would get to where there's nothing left that he was all in those concepts doctrines ideas even verses or would your God still be left there once you pulled all that stuff apart those ideas and understandings you have or is all that stuff just something we put on top of him and he's the only thing that remains and just like we probably wouldn't do that to each other say that to another person well so and so has this belief and this conviction and this truth and this characteristic and all this stuff and then build it all up or understanding them and then mentally take all those things down or off of them and then say they're not there anymore well we probably wouldn't but that it seems like that's what we do to God in that way we build we create him we don't just build him we, we create him we construct him so we can deconstruct him and we forget that there's a person there there's a person that's not underneath all that that maybe in fact be emanating all those things but he's so much more than all those things and he's there even if you take away all those things he's still there because he's so much more than all that so when I say he's so much more than all of that I'm not trying to diminish the scriptures in any way I'm merely stating that our God is so great that he can't be contained in those things because it appears to me as I observe things that there is a great temptation to want to contain him within those scriptures and because so many religions and denominations within religions are invented based on these scriptures we come to think those denominations and religions represent him as though they speak for him and it's not hidden I don't believe I mean, I'm sure a lot of people believe in their denominations think that God speaks through their religion and theirs alone and nowhere else can you get his truth and that comes from assuming that everything you can know about him is in those scriptures the scriptures are wonderful it's just that they are an avenue an opening to get to him to find out who he is because I believe he will speak to your heart and yes the things he'll say to you will harmonize with scripture they won't deviate from scripture and the things he will say to you are so great depth there there's simply no way to really explain that until it's happened to you so when you look at forgiveness and everyone has some sort of understanding of what forgiveness is from the scriptures and from 180 degrees out of phase with what it is to to a part understanding of it and then they have all these man-made versions of it and positional and practical and all this nonsense that's just totally created out of thin air 
by man and his religious nature. And then you have your father who tells you what it means when he says, my child, I've, I've forgiven you of everything you've ever done. I'm not ashamed of you. I don't hold anything against you that you've ever done or will ever do. Nothing you've done and nothing you ever do will ever come between us except your rejection of me. But that's not coming between us. That's you walking away. When you understand that, you get to or start to get to the essence of who he really is because he is a person. He's not a doctrine. He's not a series of doctrinal or theological concepts and precepts and laws and commandments. That's not who he is. And I'm not claiming to know everything there is to know about God. That's the point I'm trying to make is that you could take everything away from your knowledge of him. And what is left to be known is so much more than what you've lost, quote unquote. So consider that. Consider that your God is so much more than these ideas and concepts. Just like you are so much more than an idea or a concept or a personality trait. Sure, these things go to make up who you are. It's just that with God, it's, it's similar to the depth is so great. It's so great. And to try to understand him through a religious lens, I think is a sad thing to do because we do construct him according to our understanding. And there's no doubt about it. You can look at any religion, any denomination of the religions, and they have constructed the God of their preference. Uh, that's why I will just say that all religion is carnal. All denominations are carnal. They're all of men. They have nothing to do with God. They are. They get some points right. They get almost everything wrong. And more than that, they leave out so much. They leave out simple basic truths like the one I described earlier. Your father loves you. He loves you so much that he took all of your sin away so that it would never be between the two of you. So the two of you could be together forever. And only he could do that. Not any religion, not any altar, not any confessional, not any declaration of any theology or anything you want to say has the power that God has to love you in a way that is endless and in a way that is so deep that you could not possibly contain it or even half describe it within the confines of some building with some doctrines and rules and ordinances and other carnal things. It's all of man. It's all flesh. All of it. Every single bit of it. God has nothing to do with that. The most spiritless places on this planet are organized religious services. That is as clear as can be. When you look at what Jesus did and where he went, he was hated in the religious buildings. And yes, he went in there from time to time, but it was usually just to scold somebody, heal, heal someone with faith, scold someone else and walk out, if not turn the place upside down. But he had church out here with us, with the ones that knew they needed him, the people in those buildings. They might need him for some material things. They might even believe that he's going to do those things. But his heart, his heart cannot be contained or described or quantified with any doctrine of men, any theology, any church system, any denomination, any religion. It's just between you and him. That's when you'll find out who he is. Let your God be who he is. Because he said that I will be who I will be. I know the great I am. But the real meaning of that is I will be who I will be and he will be who he will be. He is not a God of stone. He's a living God, living a life and you can live your life with him or you can have a God of stone for whatever that is. But if you're living in religion, you pretty much already know what it is. But you don't know what it is by comparison to what he offers. 
which is life abundant, that true life he talked about, peace, not as the world gives, give I unto you. That's what he gives, and it's amazing. So this is just a call for anyone who is feeling like they're dead or dying in one of these systems or trying to convince themselves and squint their eyes and cross their fingers and hold their ears and believe that all these wonderful things are coming. Um, it's not it's not while you're in religion. Go to him, listen to him, follow him, trust him, talk to him, receive his love, and learn how to live. In Jesus' name, amen.